Super shoe usually means super features. Nike Alpha 5 III does not deliver. We've cut it in half in our lab and measured every little bit of it. In some tests, the shoe sets new standards for race shoes. In other tests, we were disappointed. Take notes, Nike. From the moment we unboxed it, we were confident the Alpha 5 III would ace our breathability test. The upper is so visibly airy, it sets expectations right away. But of course, we're here to conduct lab tests, not just make assumptions. And this is a 5 out of 5 for us. The Atom Knit 3.0 upper showcased exceptional ventilation. This guarantees efficient heat management even during the hottest marathon. The upper's thin and minimal design allows light to pass through in a way we've hardly ever seen. Yet it's surprisingly well-structured, surpassing previous versions. Turning to the microscope for a detailed view revealed that the Atomnet 3.0 material is not just functional, but also strikingly attractive. Nike masterfully blended robust yarns with thinner, nearly transparent ones to craft an upper that's both structured and light. In our detailed examination of the upper, we noticed that the heel area is really padded for comfort, while the rest of the upper is designed with a clear focus on minimizing the weight and maximizing breathability. In summary, the Atomnet 3.0 upper on the Alpha Fry 3 is nothing short of a masterpiece, embodying the level of engineering and quality that we expect from a shoe priced at $285. Following the impressive breathability test, we moved on to the durability assessment, where we encountered a significant setback compared to the Alpha Fly 2. Our Dremel test on the toe box resulted in a large round hole. The upper offered virtually no resistance, earning a disappointing one out of five from us. This starkly contrasts with the Alpha Fly 2, which had aced the test with a five out of five. If toe box durability is a priority for you, you might want to consider the previous model instead. Luckily, the situation with the heel area is completely turnaround. Nike went above and beyond to make the heel exceptionally padded with features that often results in a quicker wear on the Achilles area. Contrary to what one might expect, our test showed a much more positive outcome. We conducted the same Dremel test as before, five seconds at 3.2 Newtons and 5K RPM, and the results were outstanding. We were thrilled to give the Alpha 5 3 a perfect score of 5 out of 5. Nike has reinforced much of the midsole of the fast shot rubber, particularly in the forefoot area. However, there are exposed sections in the midfoot that may be more susceptible to wear and tear depending on your running form. Interestingly, Nike opted for a unique rubber formulation for different parts of the shoe. Our test confirmed this with a reading of 83 HC. When it comes to the outsole durability, racing shoes typically set the bar low. Yet, we couldn't help but hope for more from the fast shot outsole, given its durometer readings. Disappointingly, we discovered a 3.2 millimeter indentation in the heel area, raising significant concerns for heel strikers. On a brighter note, midfoot and forefoot strikers might find the outsole way more enduring, thanks to a better coverage and more evenly distributed forces in those areas. Indeed, we've seen two prototypes featuring the fast shot same outsole with well over 300 miles, both belonging to forefoot and midfoot strikers, and they displayed impressive durability. So, as always, take the Dremel test with a grain of salt. And if you want to be on the safe side, go to runrepeat.com and choose race shoes with good or very good outsole durability. There you can choose a running shoe whose outsole performed much better against our Dremel than the one in the Alpha 5.3. Regarding the thickness, we believe Nike had no choice but to opt for a thin rubber despite using a less durable compound. The reason is straightforward. In a shoe designed to break world records, performance is key and that depends on the midsole. That's why we measured just 1.9 millimeter in the outsole thickness test. Frankly, we anticipate racing shoes might become even thinner in the future. Wait, Nike performed a 
Tour de Force by crafting the Alpha Fly 3 to be lighter than the OG Alpha Fly while maintaining a more accommodating and stable design. And while the Alpha Fly 2 was by no means a bad marathon shoe, the consensus within the running community, and we agree, was that it was simply too heavy. On our scales, it tipped at 8.5 ounces, 240 grams, a hefty 19% more than the Alpha Fly 3, which comes in at 9.1 ounces, or just around 200 grams. So how did Nike achieve such a remarkable diet? That's where our love for lab testing and dissecting shoes comes into play. We get to uncover the full story. We found that Nike clearly eliminated the Sumex foam around the AirPods and meticulously scrubs as a significant central groove that goes from the heel to the forefoot. This design cleverly allows the AirPods to expand more, resulting in an enhanced energy return stability and improved weight. In essence, they combined the best aspects of the AlphaFly 1's lightness and the AlphaFly 2's support, enhanced them and packed it all into one model, the AlphaFly 3. We're not here to dive into the endless debate over amateur runners and the 40 millimeter stack height limit set by World Athletics, but the great news is that it's not a concern in the Alpha Fly 3. We took a 38.1 millimeter measurement in the heel, making it race day legal for everyone. The impressive stack height filled with state-of-the-art Sumex foam provides exceptional cushioning, even for those who strike heavily on the heels. This is particularly advantageous after mile 20 in the marathon, when numerous forefoot strikers may involuntarily make adjustments to their running form and transition to a heel strike. We then focused on the forefoot, where we found a thickness of just shy of 30 millimeters, which is still quite cushioned even for a super shoe. It's worth mentioning that Nike has repositioned the AirPods further back into the shoe, making it more suitable for midfoot strikers. This adjustment also explains why this measurement is slightly below 30 millimeters, as the thickness increased by a few millimeters in the area where the AirPods are located. For comparison, in the Alpha Flight 2, the measurement we took resulted in a higher figure at 34 millimeters. However, we didn't perceive the Alpha Fly 3 as having less cushioning than the Alpha Fly 2 in any way. The near identical forefoot and heel measurements result in an actual heel to toe drop of 8.5 millimeters, impressively close to the official 8 millimeter figure. This drop, the same as the Vapor Fly, ensures the Alpha Fly is versatile, accommodating all rolling styles. It's also crucial to note the major change from the original Alpha Fly. If you're a fan of the Alpha Fly 1's flatter 4mm ride, this update might not be for you. That's because big changes in heel drop are not to be taken lightly. Depending on the change and your running history, they can even lead to injury. If this is your first time hearing about this, we strongly suggest reading our ultimate guide on heel drop. It thoroughly explains why sudden changes in drop are not good and how to make the gradual transition. Unfortunately, the heel drop story does not end here. What we've learned in our lab is that the brand's heel drop numbers are often wrong. In the lab, we stick to the guidelines made by World Athletics. We always measure the stack height at a very specific length. The heel stack height is measured at 12% of the internal length, while the forefoot stack is measured at the 75% of the internal length. To our surprise, what we measure is often significantly different from what the brands advertise. We've covered this topic in great detail in our article on these heel drop differences. And to motivate you to read it, we'll just say that there are shoes whose heel drop was supposed to be eight millimeters, and we measured it to be just 3.3 millimeters. We cannot emphasize enough how important it is to be aware of these discrepancies when choosing new shoes and making your training plan. If you want to be sure which heel drop you're getting, refer to our lab reviews or use our filters. Although we publish the brand specifications along with our results, in these filters, we use only our lab measurements. Back to our lab test. We discovered that the Alphafly 3's insole is remarkably thin at just 1.9 millimeters. But there's a good reason for this. With World Athletics capping shoe stack heights at 40 millimeters, we think it's smart for brands like Nike to focus on maximizing the midsole, which provides a significant more energy return than the insole, even if it means 
a bit less comfort. During all of our long runs, the insole never crossed our minds, not even once. There's no clearer indication that the 1.9 millimeter thickness is truly sufficient, at least to us. The significant feature for the Alphafly has always been its AirPods. In our opinion, it's crucial to engage them correctly to fully benefit from this shoe. However, this time Nike crafted them to slightly protrude from the outsole, ensuring they make contact with the ground as soon as possible. The AirPods offer a distinct sensation that some runners might find mechanical. To address this, Nike added some Sumax foam beneath the AirPods in version 2, a design choice carried into the third iteration. However, they're still pretty noisy. Moreover, the continuous midsole of the Alpha 5 3 makes the shoe less clunky for some runners and brings it closer to the feel of the Vaporfly, so it's better suited for faster paces and a quicker turnaround. Indeed, during a test run that we performed in a 10K race, the Alpha 5 3 performed wonderfully aiding in securing a long-awaited sub-35 personal best. The carbon fly plate has undergone some modifications from the Alpha Fly 2. It now presents a more pronounced incline in the midfoot area, which should help in the last miles of the marathon when legs start to fatigue. The fly plate is also one of the significant distinctions between the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly. In the Vapor Fly, the carbon plate is thinner and has a pronounced spoon shape, being closer to the ground. In the Alpha Fly, on the other hand, that's impossible to achieve that geometry because of the AirPods. Anyway, Nike previously prefers the plate's position closer to the feet to enhance stability and running economy, preventing excessive sinking into the foam. This is also why we think they opted for a firmer Zoom X foam in the top layer. For these reasons, we find the Alpha Fly excels in long distance races by boosting running economy and stability. This is exceptionally true for us who lengthen our stride, applying more force to the plate rather than increasing our cadence to speed up. On the other hand, the Vapor Flies lightly popping close to the ground plate suits fast efforts like the 5k or 10k's or track workouts. We tend to land on our forefoot in those efforts and upping our cadence to gain speed. Still, preferences can differ, with some runners picking the vapor fly for longer distances and vice versa. It's also worth mentioning that having a fly plate closer to the foot has a side effect. It demands more muscle work in the posterior chain. If you often experience calf strains, the Vaporfly might be a better choice due to its extra zoom X above the plate, even if you're a stride runner. This is also the reason why we think Nike doubled the Alpha Fly's drop from the version one. It helps to unload the calves. Like every Nike shoe since the debut of the Vaporfly 4%, Nike continues to employ a dual density foam setup featuring a plus lower layer and a firmer upper layer with the carbon fiber plate sandwiched in between. With our durometer, we measured 18 HA in the lower, softer layer, which is slightly softer than the version two that some considered too firm. For precise durometer results, it's essential to measure the midsole directly by cutting the shoe in half bypassing the outer layer that often features protective elements, contours, or bumps. We believe Nike struck an excellent balance here. While running, it feels even softer than the numbers suggest thanks to the generous use of the Zoom X foam. But don't expect a marshmallow-like ride. It's much more aggressive and bouncy. Zoom X highlighted in our ultimate foams guide, it's Nike's premium foam and ranks among the best in the market for energy return. It's made from PBAX and offers an incredible responsive leg saving experience that we absolutely enjoyed in the Alpha Fly 3. The secondary foam, which is closer to your feet, is much firmer and we clocked it in at 29 HA. The upper layer of the Zoom X foam, along with the AirPods, provides a relatively firm ride in the forefoot, a stark contrast to the incredible plush heel, which has more foam and lacks the parts. That's also why we believe the midfoot foot strikers are the ones that get the best bang for the buck in the Alpha Flight 3. Given that some marathons take place in cold conditions, we feel that it's interesting to see how the Alpha Flight 3 performs in cooler temperatures. To test this, we place the shoe in the freezer for 20 minutes before checking again the Zoom X foam. We discovered that the midsole only became 17% firmer 
a change that's barely noticeable. This is an impressive performance, aligning with our expectations because PPAX based foams like the Sumax are outstanding at maintaining their properties across a broad range of temperatures. A common complaint among users of the first AlphaFly was its lack of stability. To address this, Nike widened the shoe in version 2, but this came with an unfortunate side effect, a massive increase in weight. Then, with the Nike AlphaFly 3, Nike swung for the fences and hit a home run, creating a shoe that's more stable than version 2, especially for midfoot and forefoot strikers, and at the same time, lighter than version 1. Fortunately, they haven't overlooked heel strikers either. This is evident from the eye-catching midsole flare that extends through the heel and curves around it. This isn't just a one-of-a-kind UFO-like design for getting likes on Instagram. It really works and combined with the midsole sidewalls, performs marvelously by broadening the landing base in the heel and smoothly guiding the feet forward. As expected from a super shoe, the Alpha Fly 3 comes with a stiff carbon plate as previously mentioned. This design offers a spring-like aggressive ride along with significant torsional rigidity. However, in our lab test, we gave it a four out of five, which was slightly lower than expected. Why not aim for a 5 out of 5? Excessive torsional rigidity can make a shoe somewhat uncomfortable, particularly over long distances. And it's important to remember that Nike designs the Alpha Fly primarily as a marathon shoe, where a degree of comfort is essential for those long 26.2 miles. The heel counter is noticeably lacking in stiffness, offering the race fit feel that we're looking for in this shoe. We gave it a 1 out of 5 rating, which is another reason we think some heel strikers might find it unstable. For forefoot and midfoot strikers, the design choice is beneficial because it helps reduce the shoe's weight, avoiding the need for rigid elements or TPU reinforcements around the whole heel counter. The Alpha Fly 3 only has a semi-rigid lower half, which is barely noticeable while running. This soft heel counter is also why Nike added ample padding inside the heel. With such a soft area, the heel slippage could be an issue if the padding isn't exceptionally effective. Thankfully, in our test runs and races with the Alpha Flight 3, we didn't encounter any heel slippage, even without using lace locking, a feature not available on the Alpha Flight 3 due to the lack of that extra eyelid hole. The cornerstone of Nike's stability strategy is the midsole width in the forefoot, a brilliant move that we've noted here in the lab. The design which Nike has smartly adopted is both simple and ingenious. By emptying out the midsole center, Nike managed to widen the shoe without adding weight. We found that the central groove in the Alpha Fly 3 is exceptionally large, extending all the way to the forefoot. This design not only accommodates a more roomy upper, but also significantly enhances stability. To put it in perspective, two of the top mild stability shoes on the market, the Brooks Adrenaline GTS 23 at 117 millimeters and the Saucony Tempus at 117 millimeters, are just shy of the Alpha Fly 3's width of 117.5 millimeters. In the heel, our measurements showed a more average width of almost 92 millimeters. While this might not seem particularly wide at first glance, comparing to other super shoes in the same measurement can provide some context. For example, Vaporfly 3 is only 77 millimeters wide in the heel, and ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus is 78 millimeters wide. With this comparison, the Alpha Fly 3 is actually appearing quite wide, doesn't it? The Alpha Fly 3 introduces a significant early stage rucker in the forefoot. This shift design makes the Alpha Fly 3 particularly well suited for midfoot and forefoot strikers, optimizing their natural stride and efficiency. Conversely, the Alpha Fly 2, with its more pronounced heel rucker, might be better suited for heel strikers who benefit from the enhanced heel to toe drop transition that this feature provides. Does this mean that heel strikers can't use it? Absolutely not. In fact, some heel strikers do really well with less rocket shoes. However, we think that if you prefer the benefits of more pronounced rocker geometry in the rear foot, you might also find that 
in a hybrid between the training and competition shoe, like the ASIC Super Blast. The perfect formula for a super shoe involves blending a high energy return foam with an ultra stiff carbon plate. Sumex foam provides the form, while the latter comes from the carbon fiber fly plate. In our stiffness test, where we flex the shoe to a 90 degree angle, the Alpha Fly proved to be exceptionally rigid, registering 71.7 Newton. This level of stiffness is exactly what we look for in a race day shoe. However, it's important to note that such stiffness indicates that this shoe is purely built for speed. Easy or even moderate runs in this shoe may not only be weird, but also inefficient way to use your money. If you just want the full length Sumax experience for easy runs, you should instead go for the Nike Invincible 3. We performed the 20 minute freezer test again to see how stiff the Alpha Fly 3 gets in extremely cold temperatures in winter conditions. Following that, we found that it took us just 5% more force to flex the shoe, bringing the total to 75 Newton. Slipping our feet into the Alpha Fly 3, we instantly noticed it felt more spacious than previous versions and even roomier than many other super shoes. However, we wanted to measure it to provide concrete evidence. The measurement we took at the upper's widest part was just about 96 millimeters. This might not seem groundbreaking at first glance. It's actually more generous than the Alpha Fly 2 at 93 millimeters, or the Vaporfly 3 at 94.5 millimeters, or the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 at about 94 millimeters. But the real game changer in the upper's redesign isn't just about the width. The crucial update is how Nike has lowered the arch making the midfoot slightly wider than in the previous models. Yet, we found that it still remains an unmistakable Alpha Fly feeling. This means that those who experience minor discomfort in the arch area with the Alpha Fly 1 or the 2 should find the Alpha Fly 3 much more comfortable. For those who had significant arch blisters or pain in the earlier versions, we think this redesign should alleviate some of that discomfort, though it may not disappear entirely. Upon measuring the width around the big toe area, we pinpointed the source of the roomy feel. At about 78 millimeters, it stands out as exceptionally broad for a racing shoe. For comparison, the Alpha Fly 2 is only 71 millimeters wide, offering a significant 10% increase in space for your feet to relax in the closing stages of your marathon. Applause to Nike for this remarkable enhancement. The Atom Knit Upper's signature feature, the suck-like tongue, has both fans and critics since the version one. We were again impressed by it in the Alpha Fly 3 because it obviously eliminates any tongue shifting and guarantees an exceptional fit. On top of that, this incredible stretchy and comfortable area, exactly what you would expect from a premium 285 buck shoe. We noticed that Nike used less padding in the tongue, 2.8 millimeters down from the 3.5 millimeters in the Alpha Flight 2. However, 2.8 millimeters is still on the thicker side compared to the world's best racing shoes. And we haven't felt any discomfort during our test runs or in any races. So who should buy this shoe? In the lab, we've come to understand that for the first time ever in this model's history, the Nike Alpha Fly 3 is a superb choice for a wide range of runners, such as devotees of the Alpha Fly series with minor arch issues in earlier models. Those will find that the Alpha Fly 3 redesigns midfoot and is a dream that comes true, offering enhanced comfort and stability. Or it's great for marathoners seeking a super shoe that combines groundbreaking stability with out of this world energy return, all in an surprisingly lightweight design. Fans of the Alpha Fly who loved its unique running experience but were let down by the bulkiness of the Alpha Fly 2. The Alpha Fly 3 finally strikes a perfect balance, providing a lighter yet stable ride thanks to its lightness and the continuous midsole. Or we also find it great for runners in search of a racing shoe for 5Ks and beyond. Unlike earlier versions, which fell short in shorter distances compared to the Vaporfly, the updates in the third version make it an exceptional choice for both short and mid-distance races. Now, 
but who should not buy the shoe? The Alpha Flight 3 makes a significant improvement, addressing many issues found in earlier models. However, the selection of super shoes has vastly increased, providing a range of options that might be more suitable for certain runners, especially those who experienced arch blisters in the previous versions of the shoe. For those prioritizing outsole durability, we proved in the lab that the Adidas Adizero Adios Pro 3 is the best super shoe. A winner of numerous marathon majors, it boasts an exceptional continental outsole known for its unparalleled grip and longevity. And if Adidas isn't your preferred brand, then Hoka Rocket X2 serves as an excellent alternative, boasting comparable features. On the flip side, if your priority is minimizing weight, the Vaporfly 3 stands out as the pinnacle of lightweight super shoes. And for runners looking for a marathon super shoe without the distinct feel of the airports, or those who predominantly heel strike, the Saucony Endorphin Elite, or the On Cloud Boom Echo 3 are solid picks. In our view, the Alpha Fry 3 elevates the concept of a marathon super shoe, blending the best elements of previous models with groundbreaking enhancements. In our lab, we discovered that the synergy of the ultra responsive foam, carbon fiber plate, and AirPods delivers unparalleled energy return. The debut of the new upper and a long-awaited continuous midsole also amazed us. And despite its steep 285 price tag, the enhanced arch fit convinces us it's an excellent choice for those chasing peak performance. It's a premium shoe at a premium price. It was barely available, and now you can only hope for a discount. When it happens, be the first to know. Sign up for the price alerts on runrepeat.com, and we will email you the moment the price drops. Bye.